We have analyzed the evolution of the specific energy and found the related evolution of the water depth. We will now, in this lesson, describe more specifically the different possible water profiles as solution of the equation giving the evolution of the water depth along the stream. Considering the reference level indicated here by the green line, we can write the Bernoulli equation 1 between two sections, two cross sections, distance from a small distance ds. Rearranging the terms, we have equation 2, and we will now develop the different terms here of this equation. Let us first consider the first term dz. The water depth are projected onto the vertical and cos phi here is replaced by the square root of 1 minus s0 square. So we finally, after some manipulation, obtain this expression of dz as a function of dh and ds. We will now develop the second term with v square over 2g. This differential form can be expressed as a function of dA, as here, and dA can be developed as indicated here. The last term here indicates, or um, the last term accounts for a possible non-prismaticity -prism of the channel in order to end up with a general expression. So, the differential form of the kinetic energy term is this expression here that is also a function of dH and dS. Of course, if we assume a prismatic channel, this term dA dS will be equal to zero. If we combine all the developments, we obtain equation 2, where all the terms are a function of dH or of dS. The equation we are looking for to represent the evolution of the water depth along a stream is finally obtained by grouping the terms with dh and the terms with ds in order to isolate dh over ds. If the channel is prismatic, equation 3 reduces to equation 4, that is here, and using the Manning equation, we can uh, replace SF with this expression to obtain equation 5. Let us consider prismatic channels only for the moment. This equation appears as a simple ODE and could be solved easily by finite differences. However, we will see that if we analyze the evolution of the depth according to this equation, the possible solutions for the water depth can be classified in a series of typical profiles corresponding to specific flow conditions. First, it is interesting to notice that in this equation, the numerator is actually the definition of the uniform flow, when S0 is equal to SF, and the denominator corresponds to the definition of the critical depth when it is equal to 0. The analysis of the DHDS function might appear as a bit theoretical, but it will provide some interesting physical results. So let us first consider mild slope channels. Remember, for these channels, HU is larger than HC. So for the whole range of values of H here, ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity, we will analyze the evolution of the water depth and fill this table. We know that the numerator becomes zero for HU and the denominator becomes zero for HC. From there, we already know that the water profile will have a slope normal to the bed for this depth, which is of course only a theoretical result and is moreover not in line with the assumption of a parallel flow. We can indicate the sign of the numerator and of the denominator in the table for the other values of the water depth. For example, we know that if h is larger than hu, s0 will be larger than sf in such a way that the numerator here is positive. 
for the denominator, if h is larger than hc, so these values here, this term with a here will be smaller than the value that it would have for hc. And as a consequence, the denominator will be positive as indicated here. Then, for h approaching infinity in the positive or negative direction, we see that dh over ds will tend to this value that represents a horizontal free surface as sine phi, that is S0 here, divided by cosine phi, this term here, is tangent phi. For the other depths, we just calculate the ratios and specially determine the sign of these ratios. For h equals 0, which is a hypothetical value, we can solve the indeterminacy by leaving only the highest powers of h, which can be done easily using the Chazy formulation, for example. And as a result, we see that we obtain a value that can only be positive. So the slope at zero depth will always be a positive slope with an increase of the depth. Finally, using the information we already know about the evolution of the specific energy allows us to fill here the last column of the table. Then, if we only focus on the useful lines of the table, we can combine the DHDS and DEDS information to describe the possible water profiles. We know that HU will be larger than HC for mild slopes. So the general situation is this one, with HU above HC. Let us start with the water depth larger than HU. We see that the water depth will increase together with an increase of the specific energy, as illustrated here. The evolution will go along the specific energy curve here, as highlighted, and the result is the M1 profile that approaches the uniform flow upstream here and tends towards a horizontal free surface downstream. For an initial water depth equal to the normal depth, the flow depth will remain constant. We are here, we cannot increase, not decrease the depth. So this is the uniform flow and the corresponding mild slope uniform flow profile is called MU. Both M1 and MU profiles can be of infinite length. Then, for a depth between HC and HU, both the specific energy and the water depth decrease, as indicated here. At its upstream end, the flow approaches the normal depth while it will reach the critical depth downstream, with a theoretical slope normal to the bed. This is the M2 profile. Actually, this M2 profile corresponds to a flow ending with a free spill over a weir, for example, as illustrated here for the flow over the gates of the dam. We also see that there, there is a disconnection between the flow upstream from the gate and downstream. This will be discussed more in details later. If the water depth is below HC, the water depth will increase along the decreasing specific energy curve until reaching the critical depth. This is the M3 water profile and this M3 profile is limited both upstream and downstream. This M3 profile is a typical water profile that starts below a gate, as illustrated on the picture. So the different possible water profiles for a mild slope are summarized here. No other possibility exists. It means that it is impossible to have a water profile that crosses the normal depth, for example. So now, using the information about the propagation of information, we can determine the way these water profiles are controlled. For the M1 profile, as the depth is always above HC, it is a subcritical flow. 
the information can travel in both the upstream and downstream directions. And the control is just downstream. Typical boundary conditions for such a flow are a discharge, that is an upstream condition, and a downstream water level, for example the sea level or the water level imposed in a downstream reservoir. For the M2 profile, the flow is also subcritical, and the profile is controlled by the downstream condition, typically a water level. We see that the uniform flow MU is also subcritical and controlled by the downstream conditions. If it is the normal depth HU, it will remain constant, but if the downstream level departs from the normal depth, we will have either M1 or an M2 profile. Finally, we have the M3 profile that is always below HC, so it is a supercritical flow and the information can um, can only come from its upstream end, as illustrated here. So the flow is completely controlled by the upstream conditions, the discharge and the water depth. The water depth can be imposed, for example, by the opening of a bottom gate. We can analyze the st steep slope cases in the same way, with the key difference that now the normal depth is below the critical depth. The resulting flow profiles are S1, starting from HC, and with an infinite length downstream, approaching a horizontal free surface. Then we have S2, starting from HC, but approaching the uniform flow downstream. We have SU, that corresponds to the uniform flow, and finally S3, also approaching the uniform flow, but starting below the, nor uh, the normal depth. In terms of control of the profiles, we see that only the S1 profile is subcritical, with a downstream control. For example, the sea level or the level in a lake or a reservoir. The other profiles are controlled at their upstream end where the water depth is imposed, for example, by the opening of a bottom gate. In the same way, we can analyze the critical slope channels, which are intermediate cases between mild and steep slope channels. The region 2 between HC and HU disappears as HU and HC coincide. Water profile C1 is the common limit between M1 and S1. As M1 and S1 have an opposite curvature, C1 is close to be a straight line, at least for idealized conditions. Similarly, C3 is the common limit between M3 and S3. In horizontal channels, there is no normal depth, and thus no uniform flow. Therefore, we only have the H2 profile equivalent to the mild slope M2 profile and the H3 profile equivalent to the M3 profile. We have a similar situation for adverse slope channels with the A3 and A2 profile, so A2 and A3 here. The water profiles present some common properties. If we consider in particular the M and S profiles, we can see that in the regions 1 and 3, or 1 and 3 here, the water depth is always increasing, with a decreasing velocity. In the region 2, between HU and HC, where we have the M2 or S2 profiles, we see that the water depth decreases and, as a consequence, the velocity increases. We can also see that the connection with the normal depth is always asymptotic. It happens in the upstream direction for uh, the mild slope profiles M1 and M2, that are both subcritical flow profiles, and in the downstream direction for the S2 and S3 profiles that are both supercritical flow profiles. 
The approach to the critical depth is perpendicular to this depth, here or here. Of course, this part of the profile is only theoretical, since the assumption of parallel flow obviously fails in this case. Therefore, we represent it with a small dashed line um, close to HC. So finally, in this lesson, we have established the differential equation for gradually varied flows. This equation presents a series of possible solutions in the form of specific water profiles, the most important ones being the M profiles over mild slopes and the S profiles over steep slopes. We will see in the next lesson how to solve the equation to determine the values of the water depth under, under different conditions. Goodbye!